Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, welcoming you into the Muscogee Media Studios here in our capital city of Altmulgee of the great Muscogee Creek Nation. It's going to be a great Saturday for you folks out west. It's going to be a great Sunday. We have got a wonderful program lined up for you. So glad to be able to be the state's only statewide weekly Native American television program bringing you news on network TV uh, like no other. So we've got some nice stories to share with you, some information to share with you. Uh, we visited in Broken Arrow a young native broadcaster. I feel like that was me just a few years ago, but and a young native broadcaster, a student at Haskell Indian Nations University, but at just 19, he's taking the bull by the horn, so to speak. He is in the business doing his own online sports talk show. We went up to his house, Tyler Jones, that is, and filmed him and got a feature on him. We'll show you that here today. Also, uh, our good friends at the Muskogee Loan Fund doing innovative things, getting, uh, reaching our youth. They've provided a series of art camps to our Muskogee Creek youth, and so we wanted to show you a highlight video of that that Onabin put together. So I want to thank them for that this week. Also, we want to get to one of our big features for today. It's going to actually be an in-studio interview. Our big features for today is the Muskogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program recently held a very innovative uh, social project uh, as well they've called it uh, Project Homeless and two of the staff from the reintegration program basically without you know n letting anyone know except the insiders they would be living homeless in Tulsa for a week to get to know some of the, the clients they serve some of the people that you know have mental illnesses end up homeless they wanted to get to know them we will talk all about that project and how everything went with those two staff members Sprint Williams and Kevin Green when we come back from this first break don't go anywhere we believe if you teach a man to fish you can feed them for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. I pledge to embrace and educate offenders in an effort to stop their abuse. I pledge to all women to love them, protect them, and teach them that violence does not belong in our communities and is not our tradition. I pledge to take full responsibility for myself and the women and children of the Muscogee Nation. I pledge to work courageously and audibly to fulfill this pledge for the rest of my life. I'm all get other jam And welcome back to Native News Today, and as promised, joined now by some special guests here from our Muscogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program. Right here beside me, Mr. Sprint Williams and Mr. Kevin Green. Both these guys, not only colleagues here at Muscogee Creek Nation, but friends of mine. So it's a little yeah. bit of a homie hookup to have them on the <laughs> show this week. But guys, thanks for coming in. It's great having no you. No problem. Thank you. Well, the reason we wanted to have you all this week is to talk about a social project that you guys just completed. Uh, it's called the Homeless Project. Sprint, tell us a little bit about what happened. Well, basically what we decided to do when we work at reintegration, we work with, um, you know, formerly incarcerated Creek citizens. And mm -hmm. sometimes these citizens find themselves in unfortunate situations where they may be homeless or they may, you know, live downtown area or whatnot. So we basically want to do an empathy project where we can put ourselves in their shoes and kind of find out what it's really like, what they really go through. If they try to call later and, and maybe we got someone at the office that says, you know, I, I really can't help you right now. I got something else to do. We'll really know how much they are in need and how much we can actually help our Creek citizens you know, that, that actually live down there. Right. And Kevin, you know, this was actually your idea, something that you came up with and went to Sprint with it. You guys, of course, took it to your manager, Tony Fish. Um, what was it that I think, did you see something similar or was it something you just kind of thought of on your own that you've wanted to do? Uh, no, you always see people out panhandling, things like that. And you always hear people say, hey, man, they could work and do this and that. 
and uh, I always wondered, wondered if it was a choice of life they made, or it was drugs, uh, mental illness, or what it was. So the uh, best way to figure out how, what it was was to do it. Do it, yeah, exactly. And you guys have you know, not only, you know, we're doing this project, it's pretty tight-lipped. You know, nobody really knew about it but you all. Um, and, of course, us here at Muskogee Media, and we'll get more into that. You guys had meetings with our staff and everything like that, and we're rolling things out in a in, in media form as far as covering this because I think it's a, a huge deal. But what are some of the things that you guys went through in these three days? I know that a lot of people are like, my goodness, you know, pick a better time here to do it. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty hot out there, I guess. It was hot, and like you said, initially it was kind of a – a, uh, on the fly, well, uh, Kevin kind of said, uh, you know, I wonder what it would be like to actually be down there, and, you know, and I kind of said, if you ever did that, I would do it. And then <laughs> that was seven weeks ago, and we grew our hair out for seven weeks. You know, we didn't shower for the last few days. We did have a couple meetings, well, you know, with you guys, and, mm -hmm. and just, um, but the whole thing overall was a humbling experience, and uh, it was the hottest time <laughs> of the year. Yeah. If we could go back, we probably wouldn't <laughs> do it on that weekend. We probably would have said, you know, maybe do it in uh, October or yeah. sometime, but we wanted to, we wanted to do it. We wanted to see what it was like. We were so excited about it for a long time, and uh, the heat was a factor. Yeah. But overall, the experience it, it was uh, it was well, unbelievable. Yeah, you got to look at the positives too. You guys look a little more creep. After this, you know? <laughs> a little darker now uh, but Kevin also you know we talked about uh, Tony Fish and, and going to him with the idea one of the things about reintegration is you know you guys uh, you, on the surface yes you are trying to transition uh, convicted citizens things like that back into the community but also you guys do things throughout the year tour drives um, you know fun days things like that uh, open houses uh, I mean it always seems like you all at RIP are trying to come up with something new and innovative to make things kind of go throughout the year where you're not just have one single goal that you're you know going after right uh, Tony allows us to think outside the box mm -hmm. uh, it's not a cookie cutter uh, program mm -hmm. where we're at we're able to uh, do things differently each day. So uh, him giving us that opportunity and that leeway into uh, thinking outside the box mm -hmm. was uh, is an awesome atmosphere. Yeah, I think that he does a great job with that. I think he hit the nail on the head. He's, it always seems like he's really thinking outside the box with this innovation and, and, and new things to do to really promote the program, get the program out there, and make sure that it's a, you know, a viable thing that people can see. Certainly, we like to share things on the program as well and promote it in our own way. Well, you know, as we talked about, for the three days you guys were out there, you, you definitely wanted to kind of get – a feel for these people, you know, the, the people behind just the, oh, it's a panhandler or, oh, they're homeless, what's their story? But you guys ran into some pretty interesting characters. <laughs> we did, we did. Um, throughout the throughout the three days, we actually ran into a couple, you know, and um, the, uh, the the big thing was, a lot of it was the mental capacity. A lot right. of them, people just think, you know, hey, these guys are homeless, but they could go out, they could get a job, why don't they do that kind of stuff? Right. A lot of them do not have the mental capacity, whether or not self-inflicted or not. They just can't, they just can't do everyday life, and that's right. all they know. And talking with them and being down there, they accepted us. Um, they actually, uh, the one day we were there, Friday, then a couple seen us Saturday, <laughs> that seen us Friday, and said, yeah. oh, these guys are legit, these guys are for real. <laughs> oh, yeah. So then they would come back up to us and say, hey, you know, hey, because uh, we went by Diego and Ray, which <laughs> Way different. Diego and Ray. Diego right. and Ray. But they came up and said, hey, you know, guys, this is what time they're serving over here, you yeah. know, and, and um, you know, here's where you go to get a hot sure. meal over cool. here. And so they really took us in as part of the part of the community and it was it was it was really interesting. Yeah, and I I'm sure you probably echo the same thing. A lot of people with with mental issues, you know, things that, that really can't help, you know, and, and that's that, that's kind of the sad part of it, I'm sure. Huh? Oh, absolutely, because like I said, uh, a lot of them, you know, wasn't even from drugs. It was uh, yeah. from schizophrenic to uh -huh. all kinds of uh, mental illness that uh, put them there because they weren't allowed to be around their parents. And uh -huh. a lot of these people have been there since the 90s wow. that we visit with. And so they've been over there 20, 25 years, and uh, they've been kicked out of some of the services. So uh, they're on their own. Man, that's amazing, you know, to be that for that long, you know, to have those things going on and to be able to, uh, for me, uh, it's like a, this movie I saw, you know, the, this guy goes to Juilliard, starts hearing voices, and then he becomes homeless. It's, it's a popular movie of Jamie Foxx, actually. Right. It's called um, The Soloist. Uh, but that's a great uh, way to look at it is the fact that it can happen to anybody. This guy was a Juilliard cellist you know and and uh, he's on the streets of los angeles a true story so um those stories are all over this united states of america
kudos to you guys for going out and, and trying to empathize and, and sort of see things from that point of view. Um, I, I don't even have to ask you, but I know you guys probably have a better understanding and a better appreciation for that now. Oh, it's, it's just a more humble feeling, and now mm -hmm. the appreciation is just through the roof. I mean, just to see how everybody was and how they were and how everything operated down there. Mm -hmm. When you think you know, you don't know yeah, until right. you're really in it. And you know, sleeping on a park bench is just not—it's yeah. not good for your back. Number one, exactly. we found that out. <laughs> right. We found a lot of different yeah. things out as far as um, as far as actually living down there because you know a lot of the times they uh, we're carrying around backpacks and we got these big bags and big water jugs mm -hmm. and they find places they don't have homes but they find places to stash their sure. their bags and whatnot. And we didn't we didn't have that, so we rucked these around. Uh, we walked 20 miles in two days. We checked out every area yeah. that there was, you know, all the shelters <laughs> and everything else. Cool. Uh, ate the food and just. Um, it, it was amazing. That's great, man. Kudos to you guys for that. A uh, wonderful idea, Kevin and, and Sprint. Uh, big time to be able to go ahead and say we're going to basically uh, put our lives on hold, be homeless for a weekend, So especially in the hot temperature. So, guys, thank you so much for coming by and sharing hey, that story with us. Thanks for having and, us. Uh, wonderful job. And uh, like I said, RIP always pushing the boundaries, trying to do new things, innovative things uh, to really promote the program and let everybody know the great things they're doing down there in Henrietta for the Muskogee Creek Nation. So, guys, thanks again, and we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back with the rest of Native News today. Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muskogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. Give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. It's more than just an associate degree. It's a life-changing experience. You'll see a lot of cultural features here on the campus. You'll see a symbol of the mound, which goes back to the history of, of Muscogee people as being in that Mississippian time period, that mound building society. That really welcomes our students whenever they first get here. The college in itself is beyond the building, is the people. They're passionate, very passionate about what they teach, and it shows whenever they're teaching. The instructors and the administration, they really believe in their students here. After a couple classes, I began to notice that it kind of felt as if I were returning back to something, something that has been lost for like a long time. As I learned more about the history of my people, to discover that there were very many great people that did a lot of good things for their people, for their nations, and that those people were American Indian and Native American, it kind of brings out a sense of pride that was not really there before. There is a future for our people. And welcome back to the program. Jason Salzman here. And once again, want to thank Kevin Green, Sprint Williams from Muskogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program. What a neat project that they did there. Something that's going to have long lasting effects, I think, on the way that they handle clients and the way that they're able to uh, process their clients, take them in, see what their needs are. So a fantastic job there. And Tony Fish, all the people at Muskogee Reintegration, Muskogee Media, everybody that had a hand in putting this together, want to thank all of them. To get to our first feature this week, as I said from the beginning, Tyler Jones, a young native broadcaster in the uh, in the world of radio, online radio specifically, with his show each week, The Doctor Report with Tyler Jones. This guy is on the way up. He's the sports editor at the Haskell Indian Leader. He's a Haskell Indian Nations University student. He works for IndianSports.com, covers things for, uh, it just does play-by-play -play for all kinds of people. So he is on the way up, and on that rise, we wanted to catch him and feature him here on Native News Today. Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of The Doctor Report with Tyler Jones. I am Tyler Jones here with you. So I'm glad to have you with us today on this edition of the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we started the show when I was living in Oregon, in a northeast Oregon, a real small town, and, and I was starting the show trying to look for ways to get involved in radio because I had a, an interest in sports and talking about sports. And so I started this show and, 
and uh, and you know got to meet different people and, and try to try to do some interviews. And eventually, we uh, we figured out. You know, I found out that I was actually moving back to Oklahoma, where I was originally from, and so I wanted to continue to still do the show when I came out here. So I moved to Broken Arrow uh, just about three months after the show started in, in uh, October of 2011, and uh, the show took off from there. With uh, being in the Tulsa area, met a lot of Tulsa people and got connected right away, and and uh, made some contacts and got involved and started covering a lot of uh, events locally. And, and, uh, and then that branched off to uh, connecting with so many people and uh, building relationships and getting that guest lineup going where we were reaching a point where, okay, this is getting, this is getting turned into something special. It's very interesting because uh, I did not really grow up in a, a native atmosphere by any means. I, you know, my, my parents uh, or relatives that were Native American weren't close to us by any means, so we didn't really have that connection. And then later on when I was in high school, I really pursued to try to find more about my heritage and got connected with my tribe and real closely the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. And sure enough, when it came, came time to choose somewhere to go to school, I ended up at high school. And I got so connected right away and realize how much of an impact I can have on working with native people. You know, even even something like sports, you know, which blew my mind out of the way was I'm not I'm not here to really talk political issues or new, you know, that side of things, but I still can make a difference in the native community just talking about native athletes and giving them some attention that either that they have or that they're looking for and just bring spotlight on them. And, and one of the things with native with the native community with like Indiansports.com that makes it so unique is people want to know so much about native athletes and what's going on, connect with them and really seek out what they're all about and try to keep up there's a loyal following and loyal fan base. You know, you go to these games, uh, you know, wherever Shoney Schimmel's playing or Jacoby Ellsbury or just a number of people, there's going to be fans that come up, native fans, that aren't even connected with that tribe, that just want to support that athlete and show native pride. And we've done nationwide, not just the five civilized tribes, but really nationwide, done come a long way and really support our native community as one native people, you know, but still unique in our own nations as well. I would love to work for a national network, you know, calling some sports that I love and doing some major events. That would be the uh, ultimate goal, but I still have a passion about, you know, doing some hosting, you know, whether it's on TV or radio, you know, your radio audience, you're talking about, you know, three or four hours a day, real unique to you know, get their perspective and take their calls and hear from them and, and just open up and then interview guests. You know, there's something unique about opening up and talking to people and just stating what you really think uh, that's, that's so awesome. So that's what I'd love to do, you know, play by play on TV and then you know, do some radio hosting you know, as well. And then, but uh, but I, I dabbled in writing and also in, in, uh, in television as well. I wouldn't be opposed to those things, you know, doing, uh, but I would definitely, those would be my top choices. Yeah, we've changed formats a few times and had changed people that have been around the show some, but at the end of the day, we've still delivered a program to the people that they can enjoy and get a, a different take on sports, but at the same time get some interviews that maybe are a little bit different than they would hear of that same person even, you know, on a different level. Try to, try to take a little bit different approach, be a little original but at the same time still cover the, the big issues as well. I've been very blessed. I'm, I'm fortunate to be only 19 and have all these opportunities I'm doing right now. I'm very grateful to stand, sit, where I'm, sit where I am right now. Have a great day and thanks for listening to The Doctor Report with Tyler Jones. So long everybody. And our thanks once again to Mr. Tyler Jones letting us in this house there and uh, being able to film him doing his show. I know that's a little uh, unique. He's getting ready to do his radio show and normally it's just him and everything like that and his crew, but to let the camera crews in and come in and be able to feature him, uh, it's a little different, but we really thank him for that. Thought it was a great feature. Well, moving on, as I said again from the opener, Onaban, who, which is a group that fosters a Native American business, entrepreneur, things like that. They are uh, in, they're involved in the Indianpreneurship program, uh, just all kinds of things. But this is just another uh, example of that. They are getting involved 
presenting art camps to native youth, specifically Muskogee Creek youth. They just did a series of art camps around where they teach the kids art, they show them how to do business logos, things like that, incorporate, because businesses, you know, uh, whole wings of businesses now have graphics, design, art, uh, parts of their businesses. So this is a video they sent over to us and we really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy it. Understanding the importance of instilling an entrepreneurial spirit among youth and nurturing the artistic spirits of young artists, the Muskogee Loan Fund recently provided a series of art camps to Native students within the jurisdictional area of the Muskogee Creek Nation. The art camps immerse students in the elements that make up the business planning process while teaching participants the art of working together and tying every subject matter back to art. Well, uh, we started off by making a logo and a business name and then we got that done and then we went over what you had to do to start like up your own business. We went, all, we went over the steps of all that. The way they explained everything was so easy to comprehend. There's a lot of different questions that you wouldn't expect to be asked when you're trying to sell something. So kind of got you thinking of what you need to have prepared for whatever someone asks. It's very heartwarming to me to see these kids do this and give them the opportunity to be able to go out and they'll be able to experience something that they would never experience just taking art in high school. Thanks to funding dollars from an Indian Community Development Block Grant, nearly 50 students benefited from the arts-focused entrepreneur camps, received the art supplies necessary to create their works, and will be introduced to an environment for business growth as each student will take part in a marketplace designed not to only showcase their work but to market it. It is the ultimate experience in youth entrepreneurial development. Just the experience with it overall, especially today coming here, it really put things into perspective how we need to be prepared and be ready to start a business and how you should think of unexpected things to happen too. And for them to see that process and what's going on and they also talked with each other school that was here with their vendors and um, and, and you know what they were selling and how they priced it and so they just they learned a lot. It's like it was really successful. It's really it was really cool to like see everybody's work come and go and like see it sold and stuff. Like we're just in high school. In five camps, the artistic ability of the participating students was inspiring. The passion of the students was evident. More importantly, we saw a confidence in students that is often hidden. Don't be afraid to be creative. We're different. Always listen to other people's input because everything that went together, it came from everybody separately and it all went together really well. Teamwork. It was like without everybody working together like we did, if we all didn't get along and we all didn't have our own jobs, it would have been chaos getting all of this done. So I know like, I'll use that later in life, definitely. I would say to, even though that if they're discouraged and they think that their stuff's not good enough, it, it's always a learning experience. You can learn about businessing. You learn so much more than just art, than just how to sell art. It's, I think I will carry this down for the future, for later on when I get older and I, if I want to start a business, that's what I would use it for. I would definitely consider doing it again. I think it was, it was a, a very positive reinforcement of their art and of their talents and their capabilities of what they can do. I think it was very positive. They are going to be able to step out into the real world and show their talents and do something that a normal setting would not have allowed. And I appreciate that. That's a good thing for them. Thank you, Muskogee Loan Fund, for teaching me how to be an entrepreneur and sell my art. For teaching me how to establish a small business. For the opportunity to participate in this art entrepreneurship.
And that's going to wrap us up for another episode of Native News today. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed this last 30 minutes with us as much as we enjoyed putting it all together and getting everything ready this week. You know, we were really working hard this week. I want to send a shout out to my crew, Jared Moore, Devaney Lux Singer, Mark Abbott, everybody here at Native News today, really hustling, making sure we get a good broadcast out. I want to thank our subjects this week, Tyler Jones. I want to thank Onabin again for producing that video and specifically the Muskogee Loan Fund doing a fantastic job there uh, presenting those art camps. Uh, do some more research on the Muskogee Loan Fund. That's a great thing there and something that we've got really going here at Muskogee Creek Nation uh, and relatively new. So it's a great thing there and we love being able to feature that. And the guys coming in from Muskogee Creek Nation reintegration program, Sprint Williams, Kevin Green. I got to say what a neat project that was. It's something that you don't see every day. I, I love what those guys said, thinking outside of the box. It's what we got to do around here at Muskogee Creek Nation, you know, year after year. Uh, and, and, and us at Native News Today, we know we, we do the, we do we get into routines, things like that. So whenever we can think of innovative ways to do things differently, maybe something that we haven't done before, we're going to do that. And you're going to see that on the coming weeks on the show. We're going to be trying a new a few new things here, and and uh, just grow with us. And and as if you've been a fan of this show for a long time, you know that's what we're all about. Each week, getting a little bit better, doing things a little bit differently, uh, and just trying to progress uh, with each seven days that we're given to do this. So, uh, everybody there with that, I uh, want to remind you, too, that the Muskogee Nation News uh, is doing a comprehensive special edition in the newspaper. That's our official publication, our official newspaper here at the Muskogee Creek Nation is doing an official publication, a, a special issue on the homeless project that the reintegration program did. That will be coming out around August 15th. Um, so you definitely want to look for that. I think middle of the month in August is what I talked with editor Sterling Cosper and August 15th. Keep that date on your calendars anyway because that's when we'll have the big principal chief candidate forum. Your chance to hear from the chiefs in a uh, forum setting. Uh, we're going to have Lindsey Robertson, the head uh, Indian law professor at the University of Oklahoma. He will be our moderator. Uh, it will be in the dome. Starts at 10 a.m. Saturday, August 15th. We're going to have Jessica McBride, our media coordinator and our assistant editor here at Muskogee Media come on with us in the coming weeks to talk about that. We're going to have a filmmaker on in the coming weeks, so you definitely want to keep tuned in to Native News Today to stay up on all the things happening in and around Indian Country. If you catch us here on CW or KSBI, we thank you for that. If not, you can always catch us on our online YouTube channel. Just check us out, Native News Today. It'll take you right there. Also, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, look up Native News Today. It'll take you right to us. For all the crew here and everybody making it happen, want to say thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.